So hi guys, welcome to Crazy Burger. So in a recent video we looked at the Mayu Mini version 2 and out of the box it's actually really really good. I was really quite impressed with this. Okay, so there's no doubt this is a cool little machine, no doubt about it. And the original stock firmware that comes with the device is actually really good. Um, however, there is apparently some other firmware that we can actually load on this device. Um, and one of them that is supposed to be pretty good is Onion OS. Um, so what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to actually go through Onion OS, how to install it, what to actually do and how it actually performs. Now a lot of the videos that I've watched so far have actually said it's pretty good and it's definitely the one to have. But in my experience um, in actually using it, it's probably pretty much different to that. So there's a lot of aspects that are not covered in a lot of videos which I'm going to hopefully cover um, now for you to help you make the decision if this firmware is for you or not. Without further ado... Let's get started. Okay guys, to start off, if you're interested in the Onion OS for your Mayu Mini version 2, you need to go to the GitHub site. I'll leave a link in the description if you are interested. Um, and basically Onion OS just gives a, a sort of overhaul of sorts, gives some additional emulators that are not in the stock version um, and a few other things besides um, but let's look at the details I'm going to give you some tips as you go um, and some of the things that I found some issues with um, so that you can maybe avoid the same frustrations that I had actually processing this so I'm not a newbie at this I definitely had some frustrations doing this um, it was kind of frustrating there's a few things that are not covered in some of the videos that are out there that really should be uh, and highlighting some of the issues that are actually there. But anyway, let's go. Let's look at this installation. So the first thing that's actually quite important, and I think most people are going to actually find that, if you are updating to this, you're going to actually have to first and foremost update the firmware to your MyU Mini. Okay guys, just a little tip here that when you're actually doing the firmware update, you can actually use the memory card that came with the Mini. Now I get a 64 gig memory card with it, and that didn't work because it's not um, formatted as FAT32. So even though I dropped the firmware onto the memory card, it didn't actually work. So at this point, I would recommend you get any memory card, 32 gig or less, uh, and format your SD card to FAT32. So guys, to uh, format a memory card, just right click on the USB drive, um, and then you've got the format option, and then make sure that this file system is selected to FAT32, not XFAT. XFAT will not work in these circumstances. Usually you only get XFAT option if you've got a larger card than um, 32 gig. And then just click, click start and that's it. That's all you have to do. Um, and that's very important. If you don't do that with you, your card, it will not work at all. Okay guys, now that you've got your memory card good to go, um, click on either update instructions here, and you can follow the instructions that's um, mentioned there, or you can go direct to the actual MyU Mini website. Um, just click in the top here. I'll leave these links in the description if you're going to follow that. Okay, now this gives you all the details of what's actually in this firmware update. Um, there's some fixes here and there, and the file that you need is located in the Google option. If you just click that, it will download to um, your laptop or PC. Um, then what you need to do is copy um, the file myu283, as it's suggested there, onto the start of your memory card. And make sure it's the FAT32, guys, otherwise it will not work. And this is probably the most important part when you're doing the actual upgrade. Make sure that your MyU Mini is completely off, turn it completely off and shut down. And then put in the memory card that you've got this um, update onto, place it into your MyU Mini. Then connect it to a laptop, PC or some sort of small um, sort of plug as long as it does not exceed 5 volts. And then just let it do its thing. It should automatically kick onto this screen as you see here, System Upgrade. If it does not do that, your card is probably not compatible, it's not FAT32. That's what I found, that if it's not the right uh, memory card, it will not happen and will not do this. So do not touch the screen. Once you see this, touch nothing. Let it do the upgrade. It takes around about two minutes and then it should go back to the charging uh, screen as you see here. Once it's done that, 
you can completely take the plug out and turn it back on and make sure you delete the firmware option or just take the, co the card completely out and put your old one back in and you will be good to go. There are a lot of other files on this uh, update but for this purpose of what we are doing for Onion OS, all you need is that firmware update file, nothing else at the moment. Okay guys, once you've actually got the firmware updated, you're now good to go to update the Mayu Mini version 2 to Onion OS. Now again, you have to make sure that your card is formatted to FAT32. I would recommend anything from a 16 gig to a 32 gig card. Now I'd use a completely fresh one from the one that came with your Mini, if you did get one, so that you can then fall back to that if there is actually issues, so that then you can basically start from a fresh install, which is what I've done here in this section. So you need to download the latest release, which is up at the top of the screen again. This part goes through a lot of the information um, that's here, um, just to help you. And what you need here is the second file, which is Onion version 3.11.2 at the time of this video. That's all you need to download that to your laptop. So once you've downloaded the file, um, unzip or copy the .tmp underscore update folder to, and its contents to the root of your SD card that you're actually using. And then you can boot that up to your Mayu Mini and follow the on-screen instructions. Basically just let it do its thing. Um, but do not delete this .tmp folder after it is actually done. So your folder um, should look a little bit like this. Um, obviously this is the temp folder, do not um, delete that, leave it as it is. What you need to do now is actually copy your BIOS files from the card that came with the Mayu Mini. Now it's not clear where they are, so what I'm going to do here is show you where they're actually located. Okay guys, so this is actually the memory card that came with the Mayu Mini, the original one with all the stock firmware on it um, and all the other details. Um, what you probably need to do is copy across some of your ROMs, for example, from these folders. Um, into file. However, beware that not all the, the file formats are compatible. For instance, um, some of the, the files that are now in zip here, when you copy them across, they don't always work. You probably need to take them out of the zip files. Um, I'll go into more details of which ones that are compatible and not. That's basically what I found. Some of them had to be unzipped. Some were quite happily staying as they are and being zipped. Like Mega Drive, I think it was one, and Super Nintendo would rather be unzipped so a little bit of a pain i'm not really sure why that's the case and whether that was deliberate or not deliberate but it is a complete pain so you can't really just copy across every game file that you have currently to the new format a little bit of a pain definitely so to find the bios files on your current memory card it's in the retroarch folder dot retroarch then it's in the system folder at the bottom. Um, this is all your BIOS files here. Now it's not clear where this is located. Usually the folder is called BIOS, which usually obviously helps. Um, so if you're looking for it, basically all you need to do is copy this folder over to your new Onion OS memory card and you will be good to go. Um, obviously you still need all your games, so that's really just the slow process of copying across all your games. And then you can copy it into this file, it should look a bit like this. So you basically just need to copy the one from the card that you got with your machine onto this BIOS folder here uh, in this new updated card. Then once you've done that, you've got to go to the console page, Refresh your long, uh, ROM list by pressing the menu button and then you are pretty much good to go. You will have to copy across a lot of games written off from your old memory card or add your own games as you go. However, I definitely came across a few issues which we'll go through um, as we're going on to the next stage of the video. Okay, here we have the Onion OS actually booting up and you can see the screen does look a little bit different. Now, the first thing you can actually customize that there's a few different sort of settings that you can have um we'll go maybe straight to the settings none of this has actually changed any you can see the device info it tells you what's firmware you've been updated to um but if you go to um app 
and there's a few different options in here that you probably want to sort of mess about with. Onion launcher disabled. This basically, if you enable that, that basically just jumps back into the game that you last played. Not really sure I want to do that, but you may want that yourself. You've got the manual in here, and um, play activity that just really tells you what you've been playing uh, in the last sort of little while. Not really sure if that's helpful or not. Got retro arc. There's settings you can then go in here and sort of mess about with, but I found it. A little bit confused, and I couldn't really like change the cores per sort of game. For example, I need to probably mess about with it a little bit more. Um, but it's there should you need it. I mean, you can obviously launch games through that as well, which it sometimes it's probably better to go in here, um, as we'll see further in the video. The onion onion installer. This is where you're going to add more features to your um, my U Mini. Now in here you've Obviously there's three options at the top of the screen there, you've got console, apps and experimental. So you need to tick these, a lot of these will probably be unticked when you come on. So as soon as you tick some of these consoles, this will activate it and it will create a folder on your memory card. And then you can thus go add ROMs to it um, on your memory card, on your PC or laptop. You should have some extra folders um, such as this. Now there's some strange... Um, folder name such as 5200 and it took me a little while to realise that that actually meant Atari 5200. There is another couple called 7800 which is obviously Atari 7800 and then there's the strangest one at the bottom 32X <laughs> is obviously Sega 32X. So just really strange um, file names I would have thought there. So you can take the ones that you're obviously planning and using and there are quite a lot of different options here. Um, so it's really up to you what you tick. There's quite a lot, which is it's really quite cool. I'm not really sure I'm going to be playing all of these, but there's a lot um, that are obviously there that aren't in the standard stock version, which is really good. Um, just sort of scroll through. This one's quite interesting to me is the Pico 8. Um, and the size of the screen is actually perfect for playing these old uh, the Pico virtual console sort of games. Um, I'll show you some in later in the video. Um, you can just see there's a, a, a decent selection of sort of games there. Um, so if we go up, scroll to the right, you can see some other options. You can expert icon toggle, file explorer, and a few other things, music player, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of different things here. Some of it is a bit pointless. You've got theme switcher here, which is quite cool. This is where you can change the, the theme and um, it's really up to you what you want to do there. Oh, missed some bit at the end. Let's go back in. So we scroll right to the end. There's some experimental ones that's been added. This is where you maybe want to add some things like Commodore 64. Um, and this is where you'll see them in the apps to, um, so you can play them. There's a few strange additions. I really don't know why you would want to have Jagger on here. Because, um, you know, that really doesn't emulate well on pretty much anything that's hardly going to play on in a relatively underpowered machine that's really not meant for anything above PlayStation 1. Um, and that's really it. There's a lot of options here that you might want to mess about with. And um, we'll have a look at some of the, the gameplay, I think. Expert view, file explorer, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of things here I don't really see the point of, to be honest. There's your theme switcher, which you can sort of change um, what you want to see. There you've got your options here. I'm not really sure what's the best. This is the standard one. Um, this is the one I've picked. Um, there's another one. There's another one that looks a little bit different, um, and there's one that looks a little bit like a Game Boy, I guess, that looks really cool. Um, there's quite a few different options there, I really just stuck with this one, I really wasn't really that bothered. And it really just install it as it is. Then we go back, and this is what you see. Expert mode is really just a list of, it looks like apps basically, it's really just running off of RetroArch. Um, you can sort of load the ROMs, but interestingly, I couldn't really see how this was reading, um, what, no, how it was picking up the games from the folders, to be honest. Some were picking up and some were not. Let's see, I've dropped some MAME um, in here, but not all the, the apps were picking up the games. It wasn't totally clear which folders to actually use. Um, and performance is a little bit all over the place. Some of them obviously have some sound issues. Um, this is the, the standard one, consoles, it just gives you a list. Interestingly, there's an arcade box. I've dropped some ROMs in here. Nothing was picking up. I have no idea what was going on here. So that's a bit strange. Amstrad. Again, this one you may need to make sure that it's unzipped to show in here. You get Atari 2600, 5200, 7800, Atari Lynx. 
and you've got your Capcom systems 1 to 3 here um, and they're just listed as normal which is cool and um, you've got your NES or Famicom now interestingly this is another one that you have to make sure that the files are completely unzipped for them to show in this folder don't know what that's all about because it was fine uh, on the stock controller uh, the stocks are uh, firmware sorry Game Boy exactly the same you need to unzip all the files to be able to appear in this folder Game Boy Advance exactly the same um, Game Boy uh, sorry Game Gear I think this was okay to stay zipped and television the same main plus again couldn't get anything to show on here Mega Drive have to be unzipped a little bit of an annoyance the fact that um, the stock firmware memory card has all the files zipped and they show fine you can always play these through the RetroArch option and you can pick them up there if you've got them zipped um, so it's really a personal choice Master System they have to be unzipped um, Neo Geo nothing was picking up in that folder don't really know why Neo Geo Pocket they ones are fine as they are PC Engine they show up fine Pico 8 you just need to be your .po8 style and they play fine PlayStation now the PlayStation seems a bit of a mix they have to be I think it's a, the .pb B, I, th I can't remember what it is, but there's a few different sort of file formats. It, it doesn't recognise bin and queue, for example, and a few others, so definitely need to be careful what file formats you lose, use for PlayStation. Um, same with Super Nintendo, has to be unzipped files. Sega 32X, the same. Um, Sega CD, there we go, we can keep them as they are. Now there's two folders for PlayStation, don't really know what that's all about. Exactly the same file that picks up. Don't really know why there's two folders. Ticket, this is another sort of virtual console style thing. This one played quite slowly, which we'll go into. Wonder Swan Color, same as before. And this is the Amiga um, file, which I've sort of dropped a few different styles of ROMs and it picked up everything, so that is absolutely fine. So, what we'll do is maybe quickly go into the, a game. We'll maybe just pick uh, Armstrad and go with it. We'll see how it goes, and you can see it picks up pretty quickly. Um, Armstrad emulation has been particularly good over the years, it loads games really quickly. You can see it sounds quite good to it. Not really sure how it actually controls to be honest, but you can change the size of the screen by using um, the buttons at the back here. It sort of zooms in, zoom out. This is the these buttons at the back, they can zoom the screen in and back out again, which is quite cool. Let's sort of jump out. So basically you jump out of these games, it still presses the menu button. Then it'll change what options you see depending on what emulator you're actually running. Um, you might get the RetroArch option. Let's jump into... Let me see, let's just have a quick bash it. Oh. Rubber Raid. That seems to play quite well. The screen is obviously quite small for some of these games to be sort of playable but you know it emulates really decently that's for sure so I'll jump back out by pressing the menu button again so I'm just going to zip through some of these and any of them I'll, I'll sort of mention any of the issues that I've came across while playing 5200 game, that looks quite cool doesn't it the sound is really good from this, there's no doubt about it. Such a classic game. Right. Okay, we'll jump to Atari Lynx, I think. Um, what will we jump to? Let's go with a little bit of clacks. Oh, we've got the, the screen round the wrong way. You can mess about with that by... I think what button is it that you can change? Oh, it's the select button changes the, the aspect ratio. <laughs> Absolutely, the screen looks better like that, doesn't it? But I'm not really sure if it'll be playable like that. Let's see. Pretty cool little game once you figure out what you're actually doing. <laughs> This is actually a really decent version of um, Clax, to be honest. Really nice. Anyway, let's move on. Just press the menu button and you'll jump out again. Unfortunately, also, I don't really... I think there are shortcuts to sort of save them. 
also put in the stock version you press this to save. Now some emulation still uses that option, however there are shortcuts um, and I'll leave a link in the description to what the shortcuts are and how to save games. It's a mixture of holding the menu or the start and select button and the, the sort of back buttons here to sort of save games. Um, there's a few different other options as well. Okay, CPS, let's see if we can jump into a game. <laughs> Cracking game. <laughs> anyway, they seem to work fine. I think we can just jump right through the, C the, the Capcom sort of games. They're all absolutely fine. Now let's go to um, Super, sorry, Nintendo or Famicom games. This is where I started to get some issues appearing. Now this is just Super Mario Brothers, um, and it looks absolutely fine. But as you can hear there is absolutely no sound. Now I'm not really entirely sure why that is. Um, I suspect it's playing the wrong emulator or something, and I don't know how to actually change it. But you can use this through RetroArt, which I'll jump out. See, there's no sound. The other option of playing, see there, there's the old style options, I'm not really sure why they're still there for here. And obviously you can see, look at the the sort of style of the, the menus here, they're exactly the same as the stock. And not like what you've actually got set up, which is bizarre. So th that's probably a little bit of work required uh, there, I would have thought. Right, so let's come right back out of here. Um, so we need to go to the retro arc. Um, and if we load content, let's have a look for that game that we were trying to play, Super Mario. Um, so it's probably in playlists. I don't know, where is it? Start directly. Okay, here we go. So we need to find the FC folder. Let's use, see that all these files are actually zipped here. So I unzipped the Mario file and it's obviously on its own in the .nes file. And it plays fine, but I've got tons of games in here that don't get recognised in the actual app. So that's really frustrating. I don't know why that is. Whether it's a problem with the firmware update or it's a problem with the Onion OS. So a little bit of pain um, here. But anyway, let's sort of load or browse the archive. Okay, see, you've got up to... Um, options here to choose which emulator you want to run. Now the one that seems to be defaulted is the FCE and that's the one that's going without the sound. So what I've done is use the Nestopia um, emulator and that plays absolutely fine as you can hear. So you can play Super Mario this way but it's obviously a little bit of a pain why that actually uh, works like that. So you can see that you can now play Super Mario um, with sound um, through that correct emulator. I'm not sure how to actually make that the default emulator within the actual app setting. Don't know. It's totally unclear to me how it works, but it's definitely a bugbear and there's quite a lot of that that goes through um, the games as we go through that are uh, in the app, for instance. But you can play them all fine in RetroArch settings, but it's obviously not as clean um, and it's a bit of a pain. So let's go back to the apps and we'll go through them again. Console, what we got now? So Game Boy was exactly the same scenario, I believe, I think. Oh, Game Boy's actually fine. See, Game Boy's working fine. But yeah, just need to remember that the files need to be unzipped if you want them to appear on the actual app. Let's jump out again. Okay, next we have Game Boy Advance, exactly the same, I'm not going to jump through that. Game Gear, I think Game Gear seems to work pretty well. Sound seems a little bit garbled, but if I recall it was probably like that on the Game Gear itself. So that's not really an issue for this console. So let's sort of jump to the gameplay. I don't think that the screenshot's really doing this justice, but the, the screen looks absolutely brilliant. I really love how sharp the graphics look. Oh, 
Okay, here we got some in television, which we can sort of play some other games. Let's see what we're going to play. Play a little bit of Pitfall. Oops. They seem to be working really well. So obviously if you really are wanting to play a lot of these other style games that are not on the stock firmware then this is going to be great for you but just beware it's not quite as straightforward as some of the other videos might have you so I think it's really not easy at all it's obviously going to take a little bit of tinkering to get everything perfect and um, so keep that in mind if you just want to pick up and play then I would probably avoid uh, trying to install, uh, install Onion OS um, even though it obviously has some perks here and there. Main Plus, none of the games picking up, don't know why. Mega Drive again, you have to have them unzipped, but they play fine. Um, Neo Geo, I don't know where the games are, they're just not picking up in this folder. Neo Geo Pocket, I'm not going to run through all of these. Let's have a look at the new stuff, like Pico 8. You can download the sort of .p8 files from the Alexa Lawfully website. Um, you can play them on here. What a great way of actually playing these Pico 8 games. Absolutely fantastic. You should definitely have a look at that site. I've covered that a few times on the channel. Um, absolutely great little games. Obviously you need to sort of play them on your web, uh, on your PC or laptop. But there are other ways of playing them, as you can see here. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, so jumping on to PlayStation. Um, I'm not really sure I've seen a massive difference in the PlayStation, to be honest. Um, it plays a little bit better through the main sort of way, whereas I think the stock firmware was a little bit iffy. You had to play it through RetroArt, but there's definitely an improvement, I guess, through the main um, sort of folder here and the main app. This is kind of a quite cool, I guess. It's like an alternative beat em up on the PlayStation to your Tekkens and the like. I say the loading is a little bit slow at times. Seems to be playing okay. Some starting the sound here and there, but it seems okay. Yep, that seems to actually play fine. Okay, let's jump to Sega CD and we'll see Final Fight CD running. A really decent version of Final Fight. Probably one of the best versions outside the arcade for me. And it emulates really well. A little bit slow here and there, but honestly, it seems decent. The graphics look fantastic. They look really, really sharp. Sounds fantastic too. Almost, you would think it is the arcade version you are playing here. Don't think it's quite going at full 60 frames per second, but it seems not bad for such a little machine like this playing this. It's absolutely fantastic. Okay, another sort of virtual console, a bit like um, Pico 8, is Tick 80. Um, although I found that the emulation here was probably a little bit slow. It definitely didn't seem quite perfect. And again, you can download these from the Tick 80 website. Just have a, a Google at Tick 80 and you'll be able to pick up a lot of these games. No problem. Not sure which one I prefer. Pico 8 seems a little bit maybe more professional, so to speak, but you can see here the emulation is just a little bit out. I'm not sure if this is a game issue or the emulation issue or what, but you can just see it's just not quite perfect. It does need a little bit of work done to it. Kind of a strange because you would have thought that this console would be ideal for such a thing. Maybe we'll get some more work done to that. Okay, let's have a look at Amiga. I've got a few games um, jumped on here um, and they seem to play pretty well. Let's have a look at um, Quack, which is actually included on the A500 Mini. It's a nice colourful sort of platform collect them up sort of style game. And it actually looks absolutely fantastic on this little screen. So I'm pretty impressed that this can be like an Amiga emulator. And there's no doubt about this is a really nice touch. 
output of play pretty much most of your Amiga games. I'm pretty sure that you might have a few that might struggle a little bit here and there. Okay guys, just jumping into the expert mode, it's basically just a whole list of apps that are, maybe some of them are experimental. Um, a lot of it, here we have the Capcom folders, and they are not picking up the games. So don't know what that's all about, you can obviously play them the other way. But it's a little bit messy, I don't understand, there doesn't seem to be any option to, to improve that, don't know why. Here's your Commodore 64 in here, we'll maybe jump on to this, let's play Mayhem in Monsterland. This is really cool, I think this... Uh, works really well and interestingly it actually has a quick start option this game I've played recently and it jumps straight into the game otherwise it would take maybe a minute to load so that's really quite cool that it's got that setting the screen looks absolutely fantastic in this game it really does one of the sort of later um, Commodore 64 games that came at the end of the, the original lifespan but possibly one of the better ones certainly graphically and a lot of the things that are going on with the, the backgrounds there absolutely hugely impressive that's for sure okay as I said there, there's obviously other options you can play here I don't have any DOS games on here there's a lot of sort of things you could probably mess about with um, I've got Final Burn Neo ROMs in there but they're not picking up either um, okay I've added some Jagger games I really don't see the point of this if you have a look at this it's the emulation is pretty much terrible so don't know why you would bother adding that I mean emulation is terrible on most devices so I don't really see why you would add it to an underpowered sort of small handheld like this you can hear it it's obviously struggling to even play hear the music it sounds terrible it's obviously really struggling frames per second must be pretty low you're probably talking about maybe 15 to 20 frames per second or something here um, so it's basically unplayable as it stands <laughs> I'm not sure why you would want to play it like this you can play the SNES version of this um, and it will run absolutely fine so there there are plenty of other folders on here you can sort of add your ROMs as you see fit but I've definitely had a few issues here and there at not picking up the ROMs, wrong format, sound issues um, it's happening quite frequently if you do experience sound issues try running it through uh, RetroArch and sort of picking your own um, core or emulator and it seems to fix it but it's not perfect for me it does need a little bit of work done to it um, it's got a lot of promise, there's no doubt about that. There's obviously a lot more options and a lot of different games you can play from the stock version. Um, but it does need work. Unless I've done something wrong, I still think there's a lot of problems here that need fixed. Um, let's have a last look perhaps at Amiga CD32. This is quite a nice touch to actually play. Um, however, I think there was some sound issues and um, sort of frame rate issues in this one. Yeah, so it's not really running at full speed. As you can hear, it's it's really struggling to play the CD32 games. Not sure if that's just the emulator that's been chosen. You can maybe play it better through RetroArch. It's possible. But uh, through this app, it just seems to be struggling and sounds absolutely awful. It's like running at half speed or something here. It's terrible. Just a little tip. You want to exit this game, you need to hold down the menu button and press select and it jumps you into the RetroArch folder um, and then you really need to close the content from there and quit RetroArch there may be a few other games like that, that's basically one of the shortcuts you can use to exit some games seems a bit hit and miss, some uh, games you just exit pressing that button, other games it's the, the other sort of menu sort of in select button very hit and miss, very inconsistent so that's really not cool, you really have to do a bit of a guessing game to watch uh, one it is so that's really it, I mean there are definitely a lot to like about this, there's a lot of dislike about it because there's a lot of things don't work. So maybe just another um, issue I found is I've dropped some ROMs into the MAME 2000 folder, they're really just MAME games and none of them seem to want to load. Clearly probably just running the wrong emulator, just not compatible. 
and that happens to pretty much most of the games that I've got here. Um, it doesn't load. Some of them might load, some of them not. But it's all about really probably the the back end emulator. There's no choice to change that, so you know, really not cool at all. Um, but obviously, you want to play them. You go through the retro art way, but you know, having it here, it's so much cleaner and simpler. But I've definitely come across their fair share of issues. That's for sure. Small, another gripe I'm afraid, but on the stock version if you press right you would, obviously you'd have some screens here of the the art, I guess it's not copied over or whatever happened here. Maybe it's my fault, I need to copy more folders over, but all of the sort of game art is sort of gone. It's just a small gripe I know, but yeah. I mean, there's no doubt guys that this has got some great options, you can play Amiga games for example. And they run fantastically well, and there's obviously a lot of other perks to having the Onion OS um, installed on your Mayu Mini, but you're going to have to wait up if it is it really worth it. And there's a lot of work required. Um, it's not quite as straightforward as some other reviewers would have you believe. It's still got issues, it's not perfect. Um, I'd just be wary that of that when you're actually thinking about doing it. Personally, I think I'd probably stick with um, the stock firmware, unless you really want to play Amiga games or C64 games or anything else like in television for example it's really up to you but there's a lot of other things that do need some work to it now if I've got something wrong here please let me know, give me some tips or some things I need to do to make it better have I missed something? so for me I found it a little bit problematic there's certainly a little there's certainly some things that need a little bit of work done to it um, it's got a lot of promise, there's no doubt about it, it's got promise, I think it, there's some really cool aspects to it, like obviously what the game I'm playing just now, it's it's running fantastically well, um, playing Turricane on here is just brilliant, but just be wary of that, there are a lot of issues, if you don't mind tinkering then you probably would love to get your hands on it and sort of mess about till you get things perfect. Um, but if you want a clean experience and a sort of plug and play experience then I would just stick with the stock firmware. So guys, thanks for watching the video today. Please like, subscribe, and we'll catch you again in the next one. Bye for now.